Here's a no fluff walkthrough of the no calculator section of practice test number three. Number one, a painter will paint end walls with a specific size and shape in a building using a specific brand of paint. The painter's fees can be calculated by the expression NKLH, where N is the number of walls, K is a constant with unit of dollars per square foot, and L is the length of each wall and feet, and H is the height of each wall. The customer asked the painter to use a more expensive brand of paint, which of the following factors would change? So N is the number of walls, so not N. K is a constant with dollars per square foot. So that's gonna go up if the paint is more expensive. So whichever one is K, that's gonna be C. Number two, if three R equals 18, what is the value of six R plus three? So three R is 18, so that means six R is gonna be that times two, which is 36. 36 plus three is 39. Number three, which of the following is equal to A to the two thirds? So Two up on top is going to be the power, so it's going to be a squared. Three is the root, so root three. So that is going to be D. Number of states that joined the United States between 1776 and 1849 is twice the number of states that joined between 1850 and 1900. If 30 states joined the United States between 1776 and 1849, and X states joined between 1850 and 1900, which the following equations is true. So it's twice the number that joined now. If 30 states joined here, so 30 is twice of the other one. So 30 equals 2x, answer is B. Number five, if five over x equals 15 over x plus 20, what is the value of x over five? I notice right off the bat that this is flipped, so I'm gonna try flipping it. So x over five equals x plus 20 over 15. Uh, let's see, we can cross multiply 15x equals 5x plus 100 10x equals 100 so x equals 10 but it's not asking for x it's asking for x over 5 so 10 over 5 is 2. there may have been a quicker way for that one but that one was already pretty quick number six what is the value of x minus y so whenever you see this expression you want to see if you can get this right off the bat and you do that by adding or subtracting these two so I see if I add them, I can get a 5x, a minus a 5y, so that kind of lines up, so I'll do that. So you get 5x minus 5y equals, we add these, you get negative 20. We can divide everything by five to get x minus y. So x minus y equals negative four, answer is C. Number seven, the function of f is defined by a polynomial. Some values of x and f of x are shown in the table, which the following must be a factor of f of x. So looking at the values, uh, one that I noticed immediately is a zero. I always look for the zeros. So zero and three, zero minus three, no. Four minus four gives you zero, that works. Because if you plug in four, you get zero. So C must work. The line Y equals KX plus four. I'm just gonna write that down here. Where K is a constant is graph on the plane. If the line contains the point CD, where C equals, or C does not equal zero, and D does not equal zero, what is the slope of lines term of C and D? So Z and D, I'm just gonna plug those in for X and Y and see what happens. So we're gonna get D equals K of C plus four. And it wants the slope in terms of C and D. So this is the slopes we're solving for K. So let's see, we would have D minus four equals K times C, and then divide by C. So K equals D minus four over C, and our answer is going to be A. Number nine, in the system of equations above, K is a constant X and Y variables. For what solution of K will the system of equations have no solution? So no solution means they are parallel lines. And a trick for this is we just have to make X and Y be in the same proportion. So Y is three to five, and then we have K over four for the X's, and we just have to make K over four equal three over five. So five K equals 12, so K equals 12 fifths. That's a quick trick to easily go through these questions. Number 10, in the xy plane, the parabola with the equation y equals x minus 11 squared intersects with the line, or with the equation y equals 25. So intersects means we just have to set these equal and solve. Uh, what is the length of a, b? So it's a quadratic, so we're gonna get two solutions and we have to find the distance between them. So we're just gonna plug this in. So 25 equals x minus 11 squared we'll take the square root of both sides we get a plus and minus we get a plus five and i'll keep the minus five over here so plus five equals x minus 11. so x is going to equal 16. and over here negative five equals x minus 11. so x equals uh, uh, six 
and we want the length of this line, so the distance between the two, 16 minus six is 10. So A is our answer. This one here, kind of a scary question. Here's how you do it. In the figure above, lines K, L, and M intersect at the point. If X plus Y equals U plus W, which the following must be true. So we need to use this equation. Here's a trick you can use to make it a lot easier. So X plus Y equals U plus W. So we know that, but we also know from this, some of these are angles are equal. So any angle that shares this line here, so the ones that are right across from each other are vertical angles, and those are equal. So Y equals U, X equals T, and Z equals W. And key one here is this, Y equals U. So we got Y and U over here. So we can make this X plus U equals U plus W. These cancel. So X equals W. And all we're doing for this are plugging things in and trying to substitute them in and see if they work. So does X equal Z? So does W equal Z? That's what we're asking. W does equal Z. That works. Does Y equal W? So that one we already crossed out, so we know that doesn't work. And lastly, does Z equal T? So we don't have a Z or a T. Let's see. X equals T. T. And W equals Z. So T equals Z. And that one's good. So one and three, our answer is B. All right, number 12, this is another tough one. In the quadratic equation above, A is a non-zero constant. The graph of the equation the xy plane is a parabola with the vertex C comma D, which the following is equal to D. So we need to find the Y coordinate of the vertex. So they give it to us in this form, and we know the zeros are gonna be X equals two, and X equals negative four. And to find where the vertex is gonna be, it's halfway between these, so we're gonna do negative four plus two divided by two. So negative two over two. So X equals negative one. So the vertex, the X coordinate is at negative one. To get the Y coordinate, which is D, we're gonna just plug that in. And that's gonna be A times negative one minus two times negative one plus four. So A equals negative three times three or sorry, a times that, and we get negative nine a, answer is a. Number 13, the equation here is true for all values of x does not equal two over a, where a is a constant, what is the value of a? First thing I notice is ax minus two is on the denominator of both sides. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by that expression. That would cancel out on the left. So we'd be left with 24 x squared plus 25 x minus 47. It would cancel out with this, leaving the minus 53, but we'd have to multiply by this part here. So let's do that to the side. AX minus two times eight X minus three, we would get eight AX minus three AX minus 16 X plus six. And we're only interested in A and we know this is AAX squared, and this is 24X squared, so we can set those equal. So eight AX squared equals 24X squared, divide by eight X squared, divide by eight X squared, and we know A equals three. So three is our answer. Number 14, we have a quadratic here we need to solve, and we can see we have to use the formula because the equations are written in this format. Before I get into it, we can divide by three to make this a little easier, so divide by three by three, we get x squared plus four x plus two equals zero. So using our formula, negative b plus or minus b squared minus four ac over two a, we just need to simplify this and be careful. So negative four plus or minus 16, four times a times c is eight over two times one, two. We get negative four plus or minus root eight over two so this can be simplified a little bit. Negative four plus or minus root four times two, and we can take the square root of four. Negative four plus or minus two root two over that two, and let's divide everything by two. So we get negative two plus or minus just root two, and our answer is A. Number 15, the equation above shows how a temperature F measured in degrees Fahrenheit relates to a temperature C measured in degrees in Celsius based on the equation which the following must be true. So a temperature increase of one degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to a temperature increase of five ninths degrees Celsius. So the slope is five ninths, so every one Celsius goes up by five ninths, so that is true. Two, a temperature increase of one degree Celsius is equivalent to a temperature increase of 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So we flip this, 
nine fifths. So a fifth is 0.2, so nine fifths would be 1.8. So that's the slope for that one. That one would be true. Three, a temperature increase of five ninths degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to a temperature increase of one degree Celsius. The uh, slope does not work that way, so it can't be that one. So one and two, our answer is D. Number 16, we need to solve for this equation here, but it has to be greater than zero. So let's multiply this out, start by distributing that. So x to the fifth minus five x cubed equals negative four x. Bring this over, we get x to the fifth minus five x cubed plus four x equals zero. Let's factor out an x x times x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0. We can't do x equals 0 because it says x is greater than 0, so we have to factor this part here. So x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. We're going to have x squared plus or minus something, x squared plus or minus something. It has to add to this number, multiply that one. So negative four and negative one. Negative four plus negative one equals negative five. Negative four times negative one is 4 and then we could solve this one x squared minus 4 equals 0 so x squared equals 4 x equals plus or minus 2 and let's go with plus 2 as our answer this one would give us plus 1 so that's another answer number 17 an annoying fraction question let's see what we can do here 7 9 x minus 4 9 x equals 1 4 plus 5 12 so let's combine these first we get 3 9 x equals 1 fourth plus 5 over 12. I'm seeing a pattern already of multiples, so this is becoming 1 third x equals 1 fourth plus 5 twelfth. If I multiply everything by 12, we'll get rid of the fractions, so I'll do that. So we'll get 4x equals 3 plus 5. 4x equals 8, so x equals 2. Number 18, we have an angles question. Two isosceles triangles are shown above. If 180 minus z equals 2y and y equals 75, what is the value of x? So let me write out this big equation first. 180 minus z equals 2y. We know y is 75, so I'll plug that in. 180 minus z equals 2 times 75 is 150, so z is going to be 30. So that's 30, and this is isosceles, meaning these angles are the same. So that means 180 minus 30 would be the angles left over. So it's 150. So these are each 150 divided by 2, which is 75. And then this is 180 because it's a straight line. So x is going to be 105. 19. At a lunch stand, each hamburger has 50 more calories than each order of fries. If two hamburgers and three orders of fries have a total of 1,700 calories, how many calories does a hamburger have? So if two hamburgers and three order of fries 1700 calories and then it says a hamburger has 50 more calories than each order of fries so h minus 50 equals f and we're looking for calories of a hamburger so i like to solve directly for that so we know f equals this we can plug this in and get h so 2h plus 3 times h minus 50 e equals 1700 2h plus 3h minus 150 equals 1700 5h equals 7 1850 and 1850 divided by 5 that's going to be 0 3 35 7 0 370 is going to be h number 20 in triangle abc the measure of angle b is 90 let me draw that out a b C, so B is 90, BC is 16, AC is 20. Triangle DEF is similar. So to DEF, da, da, da. DEF is one third the length, so everything here is one third of that. And what is the value of sine of F? So let's be sine is so, so opposite over hypotenuse. And because these are similar, it's going to be the same ratio, so you don't actually need to find these values. We can just stick with this one. Find this side and then do this over this. So let's find that. I'm going to do 16 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. So we have 400 equals x squared plus, let's see what 16 squared is, 256. Subtract 256 from both sides. x squared equals 144. So x is going to equal 12. So this is 12. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine is going to be 12 over 20, which is 6 over 10, which is 3 fifths. 